Please join me in warmly welcoming the Honorable Melissa Mark Viverito to the stage. Good afternoon, everybody. And those of you that are still eating, as uh, we say in Spanish, buen provecho, I hope you enjoy your, your lunch. Um, and it really is a, a pleasure to be here in a room full of like-minded people about caring about housing in this wonderful city. And I came here, uh, I just came here a little bit, uh, a little bit ago, but uh, in hearing the prior speaker when he said public housing, my ears just perked up because uh, something I care about deeply and, and something that is very important to the city of New York. So uh, it is an uncertain time, that is for sure, uh, but we're gonna do what we can. Um, so first of all, I wanna acknowledge the leadership of your executive director, Rachel Fee, and your board, Mark Jar, who I've met in the past, and obviously Sidel Knepper, uh, who has actually has done several housing development projects in my district, and, and Matt Wambua, uh, a friend of mine as well, for inviting me here today. And I want to congratulate all your honorees, uh, Charles Laven, Manotnock, and CDC of Long Island, and Shola Latoye, who is here, another good friend, uh, who has one of the hardest jobs in New York City right now, and most important jobs, obviously, which is preserving uh, our cornerstone of affordable housing in the city, which is our public housing stock. Um, and thank you for what everyone here in this room does. So I wanna especially acknowledge your advocacy on issues ranging from securing state funding for affordable housing to rule changes on the Section 8 program, which had the potential to make life harder, much harder here in New York City. And I look forward to working with all of you to tailor programs like the federal low-income housing tax credits to accommodate a broader range of housing needs and to promote new strategies for supporting public housing like RAD. This is the kind of smart and specific kind of policy thinking we need to be working together on. I know the recent presidential election is still very much on our minds, as is the announcement of our new HUD secretary, and all of us are trying to figure out what comes next. That will be a process that will take some time, because I don't think anyone quite knows what the future holds. But I wanted to offer some early reflections. First, I should say that the kind of work that you do is more urgent and more important than ever. I know that I'm preaching to the choir when I note that according to the Low Income Housing Coalition, there are no states in America where a person working full time at the federal minimum wage can afford a one bedroom apartment at fair market rent. So this issue is hardly unique to New York City. And if we're going to make progress on the challenges we face, we're going to need to convince others that this is a shared agenda. Our ability to protect vital programs and achieve any progress at the federal level on issues like LITHTC, averaging or public housing investment or increasing resources for the Affordable Housing Trust Fund will depend on our ability to build coalitions. And organizations like the New York Housing Conference working alongside other state level entities will be critical to creating that kind of coordinated effort. And I pledge the council's support in building as broad a coalition as possible to ensure the basic resources we have to build housing are maintained and that we make the most effective case possible for needed policy changes and additional resources. I don't think we have the luxury of accepting that this may not be the best time for an urban housing agenda. There are too many people who are counting on us. If we can successfully build coalitions with some of the large banks, many of whom are represented here, local community developers, faith-based organizations, small rust belt cities and big cities around a shared agenda, then I think we have a credible coalition to help effectuate change. So that is the first point I wanna make here to all of you, all of us, as a community that believes in access to decent and affordable housing, we'll need to be more organized than ever, and we need to get started now. The second observation is that there is a lot we need to do here locally to bend the curve. If we're going to lift people out of poverty and support upward economic mobility, we need to create neighborhoods that have a variety of characteristics, racially integrated, with access to quality schools and employment opportunities. This is a tall order. So point number two is that we will need to work harder than ever to think about new strategies to build housing at the local and state level and integrate those strategies with an economic mobility agenda. This integration of housing into a broader framework for equitable development is really the way that I believe we can best leverage our limited resources for maximum impact. The persistent challenges we face 
educating our children, lifting people out of poverty, building an equitable economy, remain as pressing as ever at the same time that they are more and more geographically concentrated. Over time, we have created boundaries to conversations in our search for specialization. How effectively we can reintegrate our work and start to communicate across disciplines, from public safety to education to economic development, will determine a great deal about how effective we are at tackling some of our most persistent problems. We also need to bear in mind that these solutions will necessarily look and feel different in different neighborhoods, and we need to embrace that. There's not a one size fits all. And to our communities, I would argue that we have to see change as a fundamental part of our city. It's a reality that we can't avoid. East Harlem went from having the largest Italian population in New York City to having the largest Puerto Rican population in one generation. So we need to find space to welcome others into this city, but do it in a way that acknowledges and celebrates the community that is already there. At the most basic level, one of the ways we can welcome in new immigrants is by building housing for a growing population. Close to 40% of New Yorkers are foreign born. And I don't think there is enough acknowledgement or understanding of this basic fact. This holistic strategy is the kind of approach I'm pursuing with my community and my district in East Harlem and the South Bronx. The future of my district will include a clear strategy for preserving existing affordable housing and by, we have the most public housing in the country, for, as an example, is in East Harlem. So we need um, a clear strategy for preserving existing affordable housing at the same time that we build new affordable housing. We need to protect and grow our cultural assets that nourish and support us. And unfortunately, there's a growing tide in local communities, right, where there are communities that are resisting any type of development, any type of change. And I think there are many of us that are saying that that is just not a reality that we can uh, continue, right? We have to be able to grow and, and, and build as long as we respect right, the existing community and figure out ways that we can incorporate it. So we need to create opportunities also for small businesses to thrive and grow, and we need to focus on the development of people and buildings. All of this will require much more coordination than a traditional planning process, but I believe this is a far more effective and strategic way of getting at an economic mobility agenda and solving some of our most challenging pro uh, problems. This approach also requires us to see substantive conflict and debate as essential to the well-being of cities. I don't think we can look back at our history as a city and not realize how important and healthy many of these large debates have been to moving us forward. And Sedell mentioned about the neighborhood plan that we've been developing. We developed for over a year. A lot of that debate happened there and still happens to this day. So at the council, I know that we had a couple of projects over the last year that generated a lot of attention. As you all know, the bad news often gets more attention than the good, but I'm really proud to say that just in the last two months, we have approved the construction of 4,000 units of affordable housing across New York City in projects from downtown Brooklyn to my district in East Harlem to the South Bronx. That's just in two months. So this is a council that truly believes in affordable housing and is eager to work with you to make sure we address this fundamental challenge to the strength and well-being of our city. So again, I want to thank you all for the work that you do and for inviting me here to offer a few thoughts, uh, again, during these difficult and stressful times. And I hope that after a day like this uh, that we can reflect and reconnect and get energized about the work that lies ahead. So again, thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Have a great rest of the uh, conference. Thank you.